Here we have the coping saw. Coping saw is very handy um, for fine cuts. We want to make a, either curved or straight cuts. Um, it's not very great for really thick wood, but if we're working in, in relatively thin pieces of wood, it gives us some capabilities that the other ones don't. Um, when you look at the blade here, it's a relatively thin blade this way. It's got fine teeth on this side here, and these teeth are pointing downwards towards the handle. It's going to be really important um, because this part here is actually somewhat flexible. It's, it's holding the blade in place by the outward pressure, the springiness of this uh, frame. I'll show you real quick how I can disconnect the blade, and you'll see the, the, spring, the frame spring outwards. If I press in like this, I'm using this as a, as a backstop, I can press on this and I'm compressing that spring, that frame, and now you see how much springiness the frame has. Here's the same blade, it's actually out here when I have it disconnected. So in order to reconnect that blade, there's a couple different ways I can do it. I can loosen this up, bring this part up and connect it, and then screw this in again tight, but it's a lot faster if I can simply hold the blade in place here and press it together and rehook it, like that. Okay. Now the other thing this does, <clears throat> I've got these teeth here. They're actually uh, a little bit of, they're set a little bit. These teeth point a little bit this way and a little bit this way. So it's making a cut that's wider than the thickness of the blade. So as, as you cut through the wood, you get a little wider kerf and the blade can actually make slight turns inside that kerf. It allows me to make a curved cut or an angle cut and stuff on, in the piece of wood while I'm cutting it. Um, so let's give that a try. I'm just going to start here on this piece of wood and make a little cut. And now it, to be sure, it helps. This is a relatively soft piece of wood, pine, and it's only a half inch thick, so it doesn't take that much to cut it. Well, it gets a little warm too, a little friction going on there. Um, I'm going to try to tighten this up a little bit. Next, I'm going to draw a little curve on here and try to make a curved cut on the side of this wood. Okay, here I, I s s scratched a, a curved line into the piece of wood and we'll go ahead and put that in the vise. Get it nice and snug and we'll cut that. What you have to think about is that the blade can't just go in and make a sudden turn. You want to, excuse me, as you're cutting, make gradual changes in the position of the blade to follow that curve. I'll see if I can do this and still let you see it. curve cut on the outside of the wood. Um, of course, no, no wood cutting operation is going to be perfect, so I have to come back later with my file and smooth this down. So let's, let's try an even more curvy cut just to demonstrate the capability of the, of the cooking saw. I'm going to start, I'll do it, let's try if I do it from the back side here, and you can watch how it cuts. I'm going to start cutting here, and you can see I'm gradually changing the position of the saw. to manipulate that saw in a way that cuts in a pretty curvy fashion. You see that all right? Yes. All right. So, so we can cut relatively straight lines with it. We can cut beveled lines. We can cut curvy lines. And the, another thing the coping saw, one of the few saws can do, is to cut an inside cut. Now I've got a hole here already, and I'm going to sketch a little shape here around the hole. I'll just pick something very simple, a little square shape or rectangular shape, and I'm going to cut this with the coping saw. 
but you'll notice that the wood all around this is going to stay intact. I'm not going to cut in from the side. I'm going to leave this, leave the outside part intact and just have this square opening cut out inside the wood. So let's try that. Um, <clears throat> of course, in order to do this, we need to disconnect this blade again, insert it through the hole, and reconnect it to the frame. So I'm disconnecting it. I'm going to put it through the hole. I'm actually going to take this out of the vise so I can do my thing here. I'm going to push up against it with my hip a little bit, get a little extra oomph on it, and lock that guy in there. Now I can fasten this back in the vise like before. Good and tight. Okay, we'll go like this. Now watch. I'm going to cut over to the corner like that. And I'm going to come up here, cut down to the corner. Now I can, I'll even do it like this. I'll cut this corner while I'm here. That corner right there. And I'll cut this corner here. That, now I can't. When I'm trying to cut to this corner, I can't quite get my saw to turn that way, right? Mm -hmm. Gee, what am I going to do? Well, with the coping saw, I have the capability to turn the blade here in relation to the frame. So the frame of the saw is still sticking out here, but the blade's pointing this way. Now I can cut over to this corner here. Okay, so, so far, it looks like a big mess. What I'm going to do now is try to cut on this line right up to that corner and go across and sew, right? Okay, now I can go this way, cut this one. Up here and cut this one. So now we have an inside cut. Of course, we also have a saw stuck in the middle of our wood. So we'll take it back apart, same way as before. Press on this. Oops. Take it out. Hook it back up. We were not, we're not going to leave it like this for the next person. Like, oh, I'm done. Let's just leave it on the bench. Someone will find it. That's not my saw. OK. So <clears throat> take an extra second here, hook it up. Put it back in here, get it hooked up nice and tight, nice and neat, and now I'm ready to put it back in the tool cabinet where it lives. So we've shown coping saw has this narrow blade with the teeth on it. It allows you to make curved cuts right here, nice and thin and small. So we go you know, straight cut here, curved cut here, really curvy cut here, as well as the inside cut inside here. The other thing. These blades are consumable. They don't last forever. They're undergoing a lot of forces, a lot of, a lot of metal fatigue and everything as you're using it. So when the blade breaks, don't hide it. Like, oh, I don't want Mr. Street to find it. I broke the blade. We, I understand they break once in a while. I have a little envelope with lots of extra ones in there. So we'll be happy to replace the blades if they break. I mean, obviously, we don't want to break them on purpose, but it's not that you have committed some cardinal sin if it breaks while you're using it. Okay, so that's a coping saw. Hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see some other things soon.